About three years ago, Sony released the A7C, a ultra compact full frame camera that's been a popular addition to its lineup of cameras, but let's be real here. Three years is a long time in technology years, so it was due for replacement. But Sony didn't replace the A7C with a camera, it was replaced with two new cameras. Small, affordable full frame cameras are pretty rare, not unlike the Locus Monster, Bigfoot, and affordable gas here in California. So the question is this, what do these new Sony cameras bring to the party? Now we're gonna discuss this in a little bit, but first let's dive into a couple other news and notes from the world of photography. Now the last couple of years have been really good for the photography industry as we emerge from the most difficult stretch of the pandemic. And though we've discussed this in the past photography talk episodes about how high end cameras have been the fueling the recovery and the newest report shows that on the contrary, it's entry level cameras that are responsible for the continued growth in the industry. Now, here's an example. The value of cameras shipped in the first six months of the year was 12.6% over what it was last year. A healthy chunk of that was entry-level cameras like the Canon EOS R10, and especially cameras with video and vlogging focus like the Sony ZV-E, I'm sorry, the ZV-1F. But why are entry-level cameras so popular? Now, when you think about it, during the pandemic, a lot of people took interest in photography and videography. Yeah, they had a lot more time to kill. Now that the lockdowns are a thing of the past and we can travel again, people are investing in cameras that make vlogging and video production easier so they can document their travel. Secondly, many of the folks that got involved in photography and videography during the pandemic did so with their smartphone. But at some point, a phone can't do everything that you want it to do from a photo and video perspective. So this really makes sense that consumers are upgrading to the next level of camera. Now, the million dollar question is this, will the desire for entry level cameras continue? Now, obviously only time will tell, but for right now, Heck, let's be happy that the photography industry is continuing on a positive path to recovery. Okay, it's that time of the year, and Apple will announce a bunch of new products in mid-September. TikTok, just a handful of weeks away, as usually it does. And one of those products is expected to be the new iPhone 15. But as we all know, it isn't just one iPhone model that will be announced. It is expected that the iPhone family will include four models this time around. We have the 15, the 15 Plus, 15 Pro, and the 15 Pro Max. Now, the iPhone 15 is expected to have a host of new and exciting features. Now, one of which is a stacked sensor in the Pro Max. Now, it also is expected that the Pro Max will have a periscope zoom lens that offers 6x optical zoom, uh, which is an improvement over the zoom available in the iPhone 14. Now, lower end iPhone 15 models will expect to get some love as well, like the adoption of the A16 chip from the iPhone 14 Pro. Now, the super popular Dynamic Island and the 48 megapixel a rear camera on a higher end iPhone 14 models are expected to be standard in the iPhone 15. Recent rumors point to the Pro and the Pro Max models having titanium frame, narrow bezels, and A17 processor. Now, there's also been reports that have potential customization button to replace the mute switch on the side. Now, of course, all the iPhone 15 models should have USB-C charging to replace the lightning port, which was introduced back in 2012. Now that switch is expected. So Apple can comply with the new European uh, regulation laws. I think it was supposed to be 2025. So this actually puts them ahead of things. But rumors are rumors. So until, no, 2024, either way, this law is supposed to be covered. It's either 2024 or 2025. But rumors are rumors. So until Apple opens up the curtain and officially reveals the iPhone 15, and we don't know for sure what is in store, but I'll be tuning in on the event of September 12th so I can give you guys a rundown in future Photography Talk episodes. Now, as I mentioned in the intro of this video, Sony has unleashed not one, but two new cameras to replace the aging A7C. Now, the first camera is the A7C2, which features the same 33 megapixel uh, back illuminated sensor and Bionz XR processor as the A7 IV. Now, with that sort of fire part underneath the hood, the A7 III is purpose built for photography and 
for videography. Now, true to the heritage of the A7C, the A7C II retains the compact and the form factor that makes this really an appealing for enthusiast photographers and videographers. It is also a great choice for hybrid shooters that want something small with tons of features that can make it either a good primary camera or a secondary body. Now, features include an advanced uh, 759 point autofocus system, real time uh, subject tracking, Sony superb recognition or subject recognition rather. Sony has incorporated an AI processor engine to power these and other features, making the A7C II an easy to use, effective, powerful camera. Now the A7C II also offers up to 10 frames per second shooting lossless raw imaging, separate microphone and headphone jacks, and an improved grip. Now Sony also included up to seven stops of image stabilization with compatible lenses, flicker-free shooting modes, and a new command dial, which gives the A7C II two such dials like the higher end A7 Sony cameras. Now on the video front, the A7C II has 4K video with 7K oversampling, 4K at 60p in Super 35 format, and 10-bit 422 color sampling, among some of the other options. Now the camera is available on its own for $2,200, or you can actually pick up with a kit with Sony's 28 60 millimeter zoom lens for 2,500 big ones. Now the second camera is the higher end A7CR, which the R, as you probably guess it, detonates higher resolution. Now in this case, the same 61 megapixel back illuminated Exmor R sensor from the A7R5. So. As you would expect, the A7CR is loaded with features that make this quite an interesting option for professionals and enthusiast photographers. It has AI powered autofocus tracking and auto framing when shooting video. Now the camera offers eight frames per second shooting when using the mechanical shutter and seven frames per second when using the electronic shutter. Now the video performance includes 4K 60p full frame video with 6.2K oversampling and Super 35. Now you also get S Cine Tone, S Log 3, and S Gamma 3 Cine options as well. Now, all of this in a body that's identical in size to the A7C2, but since the A7CR has more goodies underneath the hood, it is priced a little bit higher at $3,000 for the body only. Now, both the cameras are available for pre order, so check the description below if you want to be the first or one of the first to pick up one of these cameras. But Anyways, friends, with that said, it's time to wrap up this episode. As always, thank you so much for tuning in and hanging out with me for a little while. Now, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up before you go taking off. And that said, friends, hey, I'll see you next time.